Welcome to the ARE 5.0 video prep series brought to you by NCARB. In this video, we'll take an in-depth look at the Construction and Evaluation Division. Construction and Evaluation is about turning construction documents into a building. These tasks begin with bidding and negotiation and other pre-construction activities that occur before the first shovel goes in the ground. Pre-construction activities may vary depending on delivery method, so be sure not to focus on just design, bid, build. Construction and evaluation continues through construction contract administration, including site observation and administrative procedures, such as shop drawing review, payment application review, determination of construction progress, and responses to non-conforming work. After construction ends, the work continues with the post-occupancy evaluation including a review of building system performance. Throughout all these activities, you must understand the project's contractual requirements, including AIA documents, drawings, and specifications, and apply that knowledge to specific situations. You must be able to clearly articulate the design intent, both verbally and in sketches and drawings. Be sure to review the latest ARE 5.0 guidelines and ARE 5.0 handbook, both on the NCARB website. The guidelines contain critical information about ARE 5.0 policies, including the rolling clock, scheduling a test, problems at the test center, and receiving your score. The handbook discusses the content of all six divisions and includes sample items and suggested references, as well as more information on the objectives for each division. You'll have three hours and 15 minutes to answer 95 items in this division, which includes sections on pre-construction activities, construction observation, administrative procedures and protocols, and project closeout and evaluation. In the pre-construction activity section, you'll focus on the construction planning and activities that occur prior to the start of construction. Let's look at a sample question. The architect is completing the bid documents for a new mixed-use building. The owner requests that the architect include in the specifications several items that are not yet fully defined. Drag the labels from the left onto the item descriptions below to identify how each of the unknown items should be included in the bid specification. Not all labels will be used. According to the Project Resource Manual CSI Manual of Practice, allowances and unit prices allow the architect to incorporate into the contract documents information that can't be fully specified or drawn. Alternates, on the other hand, are a way to price options so the owner can finalize the scope of work after evaluating the bids. In this case, the hazardous materials cost is an allowance because the full cost is unknown at the time of bidding, but the work needs to be included in the project. The earthwork cost is a unit price because the basic scope is understood, but the extent of the work is unknown. The irrigation system and occupancy sensors are both alternates because they are in addition to, or in lieu of, other parts of the work. This is an AE level item requiring the classification of different scope items in order to recommend the appropriate use of contract variables. The construction observation section addresses visiting the job site throughout the course of construction and the architect's roles and responsibilities. Let's look at a sample question. During a routine site visit, the owner tells the architect to change the layout of two interior framed walls the contractor has already framed based on the construction documents. The framing changes will not have an impact on any code related issues. The owner is adamant the walls be reframed per their new request. Which of the following should the architect do? Ask the contractor to schedule a meeting on site with the owner, architect, and framing subcontractor to review the changes. Review the expected effect on construction cost and schedule with the contractor. Then prepare a change order for owner review. Issue a construction change directive with the requirement for time and material invoices to be submitted for the work. Include documentation of the discussion and a drawing of the revised framing in the field report of the site visit. Here's the correct answer. Per AIA document A201-2007, General Conditions of the Contract for Construction, a construction change directive is appropriate when a change must take place regardless of time or cost impacts. Reviewing the expected cost ahead of completing the work is unnecessary in this situation. On the other hand, a field report alone is inadequate because this change certainly has both time and cost impacts. 
Finally, an on-site meeting with the sub is unnecessary as the requested changes can be fully documented by the architect. This is an AE level item requiring an assessment of a built condition in order to determine the appropriate contract change. The Administrative Procedures and Protocols section is about the documentation necessary for the construction process. Clear written communication is essential. Let's look at a sample question. After construction has started, the contractor finds that the specified carpet has been discontinued. The budgeted cost was $17 per square yard, with a total of 3,500 square yards of carpet needed. The carpet subcontractor suggests an alternate carpet, which is acceptable to the owner. It's $18 per square yard, but the price would drop to $15 per square yard, with a 4,500 square yard minimum. Due to the delay in finding the replacement carpet, the order must be expedited, which adds a dollar per square yard premium. Using the most cost-effective option, what will the cost difference be for the new carpet? The correct answer is $7,000. you will first need to calculate the original cost of the carpet. Next, you'll calculate the cost of the two alternates, the higher price at the specified yardage and the discounted price at the increased yardage. In both cases, the premium for expediting the order must be included. After deciding on the more cost-effective option, you'll subtract the original price from the cost of the alternate to determine the difference. Because the dollar sign is included next to the answer box, you know the answer must be provided in dollars. This is an AE level item requiring you to analyze cost and specification information to evaluate product alternates. In the project closeout and evaluation section, you'll focus on post-construction activities. This is the smallest section of the division, but it covers several important aspects of completing a project. Let's look at a sample question. The contractor notified the architect that the project was ready for substantial completion. The architect inspected the work and prepared the following list of incomplete work. Click in the box next to the item that must be completed before the architect can issue the certificate of substantial completion. This is the correct answer. According to the Project Resource Manual, CSI Manual of Practice, reaching substantial completion does not mean all the work is completed. However, any remaining work must not prevent the owner's use of the building. The only item on this punch list that prevents full use of the building is the bathtub that doesn't drain properly. This AE level item requires you to evaluate a typical construction procedure and determine the outcome. Ready to get started? Refer to the ARE handbook for a list of reference materials most often used to develop the questions included in this division. This is not an exhaustive list of all possible references, but a suggestion for further reading. And remember, lots of people are studying for the ARE right now, so join the conversation. You can stay on top of the latest news and connect with NCARB and your colleagues with these sites. Be sure to check out our ARE community created just for ARE 5.0 and take a look at our other ARE 5.0 division videos. Thanks for watching.